The Soul of Freeman Over Titans have been really great at making them unkillable in most content. From making the hammers uber powerful, to making them practically unkillable no matter how low their health gets, this season has really made them worth their weight in gold. Of course, there has been a few downsides to the update, but not enough to validate the whole class. One build though that has gone under the radar makes full use of the instant health healing from the moment you hit critical health. And I'm talking about Tommy's matchbook and Lorely Splendor together. These two in hand play right into their design and allow you to abuse this idea for maximum satisfaction. So if you ever want to see what living on the edge ever looked like, then this build is going to be for you and it will be a pleasure to show you. But you know what else is a pleasure for me? This channel and you guys right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it goes a long way for me. The start of the subclass, we'll be using Hammer of Soul so we make use of the sunspots produced and for us to continuously inflict damage over and over again. As the build states, we'll be near unkillable as long as the right tricks are activated. For this, we need to make sure that our sunspots are active at all times and we at least have a combatant or two active to go ahead and activate our skills. If all goes as planned, you'll be shredding through things just like my love for cheese. So for the aspects, we have the following. Raw and Flames, where getting solar kill abilities increases the damage of our solar abilities. Our Uncharged melee will also apply Scorch and solar damage as well. We then have Stolen Invictus, where solar, super, or Scorch targets defeat will produce a Sunspot, which will then give increased ability regen and our super draining slower. It will also apply Scorch and Restoration to the user. For Fragments, you'll want Ember of Torches, where melee hits will make you another Radiant, Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stats to targets, Ember of Imperium, which allows us to extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant via solar weapons or ability kills, and Ember of Solace, where Radiant and Restoration effects are increased. For stats, you'll want 100 Resilience, 70 to 80 in Recovery, and 60 in Discipline. The main stat to focus on here is, of course, Resilience, as this will allow us to quickly get our sunspots up and going through passive means. This should be easy and flexible to do if you focus your armor or doom to just Resilience. Key mods now to have are Phantom Might for a 25% solar weapon buff, Battle for Wealth for a times 2 worlds created, Elemental Armors for creating worlds via solar weapons, World of Life for passive health regen once elemental worlds are collected, and Classy Restoration, where activating our class ability will give us restoration. This is how you can become unkillable in this build, and still use things like Tommy's matchbook to its full potential. Every time we hit critical, we'll produce a sunspot, which will be actively giving us a weapons buff and health regen over the period that the sunspots last. From this, we can then use Tommy's effect to speed up the regen over our class ability and extend our current buffs so that by the time we need to reload, we will have a full barricade at present. This simple but fun method of play allows users to never fear death so much, but you can still mess up if too many combatants are attacking you, especially if they're a bit more higher level than you. For weapons, as we're going to be staying still for the majority of things we face, so to make full use of this, it will be wise to use weapons that fit this theme. For example, we have the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Cornered and Chill Clip, which is good if you want to quickly take out a mini boss before they can land a hand on you. Just like Riptide, you can use this to counter a large group of combatants in one go and then apply your melee so you can get your sunspots going. It's fantastic at giving you ample room to breathe and it's also great against bosses as well, so don't sleep on chill clip folks. For secondary I have the Tommy's Matchbook, which is a weapon I love to use if I want to mess around with. Although its design is to burn the user but also slowly increase your damage output, this can be favourable to those who use healing based mods and perks to keep yourself afloat. With Solar Freeman Earl, we have many ways of keeping ourselves alive without the need of additional mods and perks, so this can be used and abused to its fullest. At the same time, Tommy's will benefit greatly from the constant region and from the might buffs for that 56% solar damage increasement. With healing on demand and increased damage, you do not want to miss out on using Tommy's this season or at all. For Heavy, we have Palomar B with Explosive Light and Ambitious Assassin. And because we are using a build that will be using a lot of orbs of power, it only makes sense to use the following for that increased weapon damage all the time. Now the heavy is down to the user, but I would recommend you stick with something range base so you can make full use of your sunspots. Alternatively, Heads and Vengeance from Mortal Glass is another good solar rocket to use that can get tracking and roll pull in one. Only thing is you'll need to run the raid if you haven't already, 
So, except from that, Chain of Command Heavy Machine Gun is another weapon you use that everyone can easily get and is pretty flexible as well. For the stats, we want to make sure we have our resilience at 100 and only 100 as we need that passive cooldown for our class ability to occur as much as we can. Once you hit 100 resilience, this should allow you to charge your class ability very fast as long as you stay within your sunspots and it's all because of this you don't need to worry about adding additional mods if you don't want to. Elemental World will help you out along the way, but the main power for the build will be coming from your sunspots and fragments supporting it. You could add in the Absolution and Installation mods as well, with both of them offering to reduce your class ability down. But this is down to you if you want to fill these slots in just in case, or if you want to add in a scavenger mod for your heavy or primary weapon. For recovery, having yours at 70 is more than enough to keep the build sustained, as you will have restoration based mods also working alongside you. Don't worry about creasing this further than needed, as you're not going to need that much anyways with how the build is designed. This goes the same for Discipline at 60 and Strength at 40. Both of these two stats will be used a lot in the build, since Sunspots will be actively grinding energy back. However, you don't need to fully invest into them, as the cooldown rate via Sunspots and Fragments use allow users to control this area as you please. Instead of adding on Discipline mods, you can add on more Recovery or Intellect instead, if you want to focus the build on Survival alone. I do have the Explosive Finisher mod though, as backup, in case I use my grenades, but can't recover them in time because I might get killed in the process. Although the chances of dying is rare, it could happen if you're near, say, a ledge. At left over wise, we only have Harmonic Siphon times 2 for creating orbs of power via solar weapons, and that should really be it in terms of mods needed. So, let's compile our list into one so you can get an overall idea as to what's happening. For Head, we have Resilience, Harmonic Siphon times 2, and for the Might mod. Arm, we have Resilience, may well make a mod. Chest, we have Recovery, Armor, of the Dying Sun, because of Damner, and Bound for Well mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Insulation, Absolution, and Elemental Armor's mod. Mark, with Minor Discipline, Classy Restoration, Explosive Finisher, and Well of Life mod. The all powerful Tommy's Matchbook has now got a perfect build to complement its style of play and offer users the ability to re really tear things up. Not a lot of weapons are like Tommy in how it works, since, too many, a weapon designed around lowering the user's health can be a major turnoff. Before Soda 3.0 came along, this was quite an issue for some to manage around, as only Warlocks and Titans can make full use of the weapon and then have something available to get their health back up again. Alongside that, they also had to compete with the slow reload and the even slower damage boost you would get once the weapon reaches half its magazine. Although having a mass work helped a lot in getting your health back up quickly, it was still an issue to overcome if you ever wanted to take it in, say, legend content or even PvP. Now though, this is slightly a thing of the past as we can instantly get our health up without ever needing to move much, and then we get a damage boost on top of what we already have, and then go from there. We can abuse this to our heart's delight and not worry about being overwhelmed as we can tank the damage like a true titan, and like shown, this can go really really hard in the right environments. Just damage, health and sunspots, and worlds galore. But the issue with being unkillable is that you can still die, but only if you play reckless. For an example, getting blown off a map will kill you outright as you, well, can't win against gravity. You can also die by combatants if said combatants are higher than you, or you're being hit by multiple heavy attacks that outpace your healing. This has happened to me before as I got too cocky and threw myself into the middle of a large group of combatants. Of course, it didn't work the way I wanted to, and it taught me the lesson that even a god can be killed. However, the build is still versatile enough to tank enough damage that even using this mass of nightfall won't break it too much. GMs I can see this being a bit too far for such a build, but mass and below is the sweet spot for the Tommies. So if you want to have some tomfoolery in your life, and you love solo like I do, then I highly recommend you give this very hot build a try in whatever ending content you have in mind. You'll love it. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you like that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.